presence and uh, we are going to talk about five entities around the world which the first step was done or I'd say stuck by navigation. Five hundred years ago. Exactly five hundred years ago. Because he stopped twenty of September of fifteen nine. And we have a most much more important around the world figure, which is our around the started four months ago. So I will start by having an and I will make a reflection about the second step, which is our break. Let's go a little bit forward. And to go forward, I need that a slight change. And they do not. Hello? Can I have some support from technology? Oh. Technology is always like this. Don't worry, technology is always like this. But it was. Okay. So, this was a man. He starts the first two around the world by a reason. And the reason was not making a round the world. Thing. I will explain later. So, after we will talk about how. But let's have an overview of what it was in that period. In that period, we were in 1453. It was one of the end of the Middle Age, 100 years war. But there was another thing: the conquest of Byzantine Empire by the Ottomans. And those important historical events marked the end of the Middle Age. But in the south of Europe, things were different. Spain was totally involved in fighting to conquer Granada in all the south, and Muslims, and Arabs. And Portuguese were trying to discover the wings, to discover the sea currents, and trying to stop about discovering a way to repair. Let's see why. You see, to talk about this, we should go to the end of the 14th century. And in the end of 14th century, born a man called Don Enrique. It was the son of the king of Portugal. This man was, you can say, the grandfather of globalization. It starts exactly in that period. But with 20 years old, he was in charge of conquering Silva. Silva is a town controlled by the, the Arabs in the north of Africa. But you see, in Europe, countries were fighting against each other. In Spain, Spanish was, were fighting against the Arabs. And in Portugal, we didn't want to fight Spanish in that period, so we tried to go to see. But why? When Enrique conquered Silva, his father appointed him as the governor of Silva. And as the governor of Silva, you know that today governors does make much work, but in that period they make almost nothing. So he tried to navigate in the Mediterranean. And when he was navigating in the Mediterranean, he found beautiful, fantastic, rich towns. And these rich towns, mainly Florence, Venice, Genoa, and so on, were very rich for three reasons. One, spices. Spices came in from India, through several places, several ways, and one of them we are visiting, Petra. Petra was one of the places that the spices were coming from India and came to the Mediterranean. Another thing was silks and another jewels. So he 
and we start to check if they bring camels with the small packs of spices. If we came with big boats, it's so beautiful. We will become as rich as these Italian towns and it will change our country. The next step is the main objectives of the discoveries. In that period, there were two main objectives. One it was to spread the Christian religion. And another was making the country rich. So, when starting discovering all those occurrences running the sea, and all the winds as well running the sea, we can see that these currents and these winds were just like this. So, if we want to come from the Iberica Peninsula, coming down, we came down up here, but not like this against the winds and against the sea currents. How does it work? Just like this. They just make this and that only thing and nothing for this. Okay. This was how really it works. Even today, if your engine does death, uh, 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 if your bird doesn't have a jeep engine, so you should follow the windows and the current. And this is the fact. Next. Okay. In 1336, the Portuguese navigators arrived to the Island. But the Pope, the Pope was a Spanish Pope and said that the United Islands were to Spain. There was a conflict, diplomatic conflict, but never as we changed since then. So the things ran, go on, going on, and this is was how the things were run. The First, the discoveries, you could see that it was just discovering and navigating to the south and discovering lands and places after places. In 1478, there was an agreement between Portugal and Spain in order to divide the world in two parts, one belonging to Spain and another belonging to Portugal. And in the north of this line is Alcacibus, the place where the treaty was agreed. And in the north, these all lands in the north should belong to Spain if the Spain would find something in there. And all the lands in the south should belong to Portugal. But in the north, what it was already discovered, it remains for Portugal. So the scene was running more and more. And another thing is that running here, here, you see, and after here. As you can see, it was about 20 years to come from here to here. Why? Because they didn't knew that it was necessary to go in this direction. After, in 1488, Four years before Columbus arrived to the United Islands, Portuguese arrived here. Okay, what next? Let's see what it was next in this puzzle. During three decades, up to 1590, fall of Cordoba and Spain finally could conquer the south of Spain to the Moorish. 1492. Many uh, Columbus were living for, we don't know scientifically where Columbus was. We don't know if it was in Italy, if it was in Spain, if it was in Portugal. What we know is that Columbus spent more than two decades living in Portugal, offering his services to the king of Portugal, located in the west to find India offering his services to Eric the Eighth of the United Kingdom, to England in that period, to, but no one accepted this service. In 1492, a 
at the 5th of January when Cordova falls in favor of King Ferdinand and Isabel, Columbus immediately offers his services to the King of Spain and they accepted it. So Columbus starts preparing his fleet and he started in, in uh, August. Next, Columbus in October arrives at the Caribbean Islands. Okay. He thought he was in India, but in fact he was in a new board, or I say, a new country shown to the Europeans. But in the same year, Duarte Bashir Pereira, he was a Portuguese navigator, already met the American continent. And you will, you will see what it happens with these two situations. In 1497, Vasco da Gama arrived to India, crossing the south of Africa. So, because of that, of this, this is the agreement made between Portugal and Spain. But in fact, Caribbean's islands are in here lower than that. So according to this treaty, these lands should belong to Portugal. But again, they decide to change this. And Pope Alexander VI from Aragon just changed it. And changing it in this direction, from here to here. But we put this only 100 leagues west of him. The league means 5 kilometers, so 100 leagues means that it was 500 kilometers. So it means that this line doesn't define exactly what it was happening in that period. Why? Because Azores is more in here. So, Portugal and Spain start to discuss a new adjustment of that line. And the adjustment, and, and Portugal already knew that Brazil exists. But what happened? The Portugal and Spain agreed to move this line more west. Moving this line more west means two things. That Azores Islands that were in this side was well, they were included in that region. And Brazil that Portugal knew that exists in that period was included as well. So Spain was the red and Portugal was left. Both were glad they disagreed. And this man was the first discoverer of this continent, and only in 1500 Cabral was traveling and formally find Brazil. Next, so this line was changed, and from 100 to 330 days. But in that period, there was a problem. Google didn't exist in that period. So they didn't know here where that line was passing. If they passed in a region on which there was spices as well to Spain, and what shall we do? We sh should send there some person that could identify this region to give concrete information. So, what happens? In 1590, Portugal was beautiful rich, was the first gold coin in the world. Because why? Because spices were coming in big ships, not in camels, but big ships to Europe. And Spain was the king of Spain, Charles I, was really surprised because money was not entering in Spain. 
because Aztecs, the conquering of Aztecs Empire, it was only in 1590. It starts only in this period, and conquering of of Incas Empire only in 1533. This means that in 1590, money in gold or silver was not running to Spain. Okay. Next, this is. The reason why Carlos I of Spain gave the mandate to Magdalene to go there and find if this was belonging to Portugal or to Spain, or and if there were spices in that region. Okay, Magdalene stopped his trip and uh, with five ships. 256 men, and it was running this way. He starts in 20th of September. In November, he was already in the north of Brazil. He goes down and down. But in that period, they didn't knew yet that the claim that the seasons were different in the south of the world from the north. So, when he arrives here, in a little bit south of what is today Buenos Aires, he starts to feel, feel a little bit cold. And he decided, okay, if we are, if we are cold, it's because we are in winter. It was December, January. Let's stay here a little bit, and the climate will start to warm, and we go down calmly. So, he stays for, for about two months in here, and after, when he ran to the south, to the south, he started to be worse and worse. And in this box here, this, he got very strong storms. That's why, when he arrives, it took more than six months to cross the very narrow south. But there are many ways in that spirit. And when he arrived to the ocean, he said, this is a very peaceful ocean. Pacific. This is Pacific Ocean. That's why it is Pacific Ocean still today. But some other interesting thing. Why is it called Patagonia? You know why? For sure, most of you should know. Because people are really big in Patagonia. If they are big, they have big food. If they have big food and it's cold, they put some covers around the food. So, Patagonia means Patagonish, means people with big feet. Okay, let's go on without trip. Next, what happened? Magalhães has done this and gone up till there. The, the, the Cebu King. Okay? It took more than one year to arrive here. When he arrived, he said to the local king, I have a big offer to you. A big business, big spice business, you will be, you will sell the spices to my king and you will be rich and you will be rich as well. And I have a good God to make you the honor of all this rich. Okay, beautiful. What shall I do? I'm here to help you. Oh, but I have a problem with some other local tribes. They want to make war to me. So, I can go there and I will destroy them. So Morgan actually with very small boats to his people, part of his people, in their small boats, and go to the coast. When they saw the enemies in the coast, he put the, the guns used that makes more noise than killing people. Boom! A big boom. But nothing happens. And the locals with arrows, poison arrows, they kill all. So this is, unfortunately, the end of the village. 
But if they should go on, what they should do in the middle of the, uh, in the South of the Pacific Ocean, so they start to think on returning back through the same pass. They are passed. They have more. They have been there. With the second commander, it was that the man that uh, uh, followed him, Sebastian Darcano. It was a man from the north of Spain, Basque country, and this man takes the command of the fleet. He tried to return back, but as you, we have seen before, the currents and the winds were against him. So he was spending more than six months there to return back, and he could not. So he has decided to go around and to stay and to make all the team. So, fortunately, a man called Antonio P. de Fieta could make the diary and tell us this story. Okay? They returned from five, they returned five in three ships and from two under fifty-six they arrived only eighteen alive. This is this story. Okay, let's go on about the first around the world trip. So, about our, which is much more important for us, of course, our <coughs> around the world trip in 2019. Okay, this is our trip. And when I start this trip, I decide to make a diary. But not the traditional diary. I've made a diary with videos, two minutes, three minutes, one and a half minutes, covering all the ports and all important things that we have been passed through during the last four months. Of course, and when they invited me to make this presentation, I said, it's impossible to make 60 videos of two minutes, it's two hours. You will fall asleep or you will go out. So, the only possible solution is to make small videos, no more than half a minute, and tell you a little bit the story of our trip. My intention was to make a blog and make it publishing day after day. And fortunately, as you know, internet is not, has no conditions for this. So I will make as well my blog when I will run home next week. And my blog will be free, open for everyone who wants to remember this trip made by all of us. Okay? So let's have a look. About that. For me, I started in Barcelona. Can I can you see? On the other side of Barcelona, Barcelona directly to Malaga. Malaga is a beautiful town with a fantastic cathedral, with a huge, enormous quantity of cultural deposits in there. And where Pablo Picasso was born, where you can see a beautiful view all over. But suddenly, we go to Madeira Island. Madeira Island is a very beautiful place. On, you have many things, many places to see, like Cabo Girão, like the North Coast, Falls, Waterfalls, and many other things. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you. Porto Nish, Porto Nish is a very natural place, a natural human place, and so on. We pass through Philipsburg, Channel, and Lake. From my point of view, there's not much to see in Curaçao, and we start to see Santa Marta. Santa Marta is an island of bananas, of, and we have been there, we have been visiting a local tribe, and this tribe was very nice, everybody was very nice, and from there we go to Cristobal. Cristobal is an amazing place. Something from my point of view is forgetting. We could not visit Panama town with a small group of very nations. But after that, we go to Panama Canal. 
this is very interesting to show to our grandchildren how does it work. How <coughs> boats came from one side to another and we go to the Pacific Ocean. Everybody taking photos. And how it works. The water came from the side. And this is the way it gets. Oh. We are not being in the situation. Okay? <coughs> you see, all the photos and videos were taken by me and my wife, and all the edition was made by me. Okay? And the sound, I made some background sounds. Okay? Punta Range. Punta Range is just a point of sand with the traditional it is like fishing, the fishermen were there and after that we were in Nicaragua. Nicaragua is town, is a country where there is uh, uh, some many traditional uh, from Spain like in Lyon. Puerto Vallarta. Puerto Vallarta is a very beautiful uh, town in the Pacific Ocean with a very nice seaside avenue, very well decorated, very well prepared for tourists that you could have seen, with many statues, many beautiful statues all over. And uh, the locals have <laughs> made some uh, activities to show us how to do it. Look. Certainly most of you have seen this. And some good very nice. Very nice place, very nice money. And we have been out to around the fingers, the sea lines, and driving there. Mm -hmm. The forest and the land was beautiful, we really did enjoy it. But our star, our, our trip was just in the beginning, San Diego. And you, we entered a new culture, American environment, with beautiful construction, everything very well organized, and so on and so on. But from San Diego, we passed to LA, and immediately we went out of LA. From where to? Pass to Vegas to, to visit Grand Camp. Vegas is something dreamful. With uh, people should be fair enough to spend much money, so I do it. <laughs> and this is a casino in a very short way. All around. Here, we like very early in the morning to go to the canyon, Grand Canyon. Grand Canyon is the result of the movement of tectonic plates. Uh, the erosion is very, I'd say the contribution of the erosion is very short. Tectonic plates are the main reason for all these spaces between the mountains and it's something really beautiful that is if you have been there you can remind it if you haven't been if you haven't been there you are sorry for not being there. <laughs> so, good very good we really enjoy it and now San Francisco if you go to San Francisco don't forget to wear a flowering right? San Francisco, the Golden Gate, Alcatraz, all of this, the lion, the sea lions. Cable cars. And the 
contrast with a very rich campus in the poverty in this place. Something that shocks me. Chinatown, Golden Gate, Alcatraz. Tsunami right up to there, the ceiling of the church. Something bad. Samoa. Okay. Again, traditions mixed with the new crime. Tonga, Kuevov. As well, girl. So we didn't find anything special. We visited a lot of tribe, very nice people. They make some kind of nice surprise and stuff like this. But some interesting area. And diving. Here. Look in the sea. Good capture these images as well. Beautiful. Again, we will pick a feeling bright with the fishes. And 
enemies. And now, my enemies. One. In the river. No, this is not snow. This is artificial snow. Night show. And again, very nice fire. But, gives us, but we didn't felt any 
and convenience and, and stability on board. This was passed calmly because the very good team of navigators from MSC Magnifica they take care of the navigation. More. Crossing the equator line. About this, we have a party. <laughs> this party, uh, it was a fantastic party, wasn't it? Eric <laughs> having fun on board. More about this. What is this? The date line. We have passed the date line in a very special condition. And these very special conditions are because we are across the date line like this. This is our group. See, look. Three March, please. Sorry? Three March. See? Sorry. Nobody's perfect. <laughs> okay. So, if you look carefully to this image, our boat was like what? The bow here, it was in the north. Hmm? The stern, it was in the south. But the port, this is the left side of the boat, it was in one day. And the other side of the boat, it was in the day before. So, what a strange boat. Okay? Next. You see, this fellow, you know him, don't you? Yeah? Yeah? Okay. But this chair doesn't exist anymore. Because three or four days after we have been taking tea in this hotel, the terrorist attack destroyed part of the important topic and killed thousands and uh, hundreds of people. More, a storm at Australia. When we were in Melbourne, we left one day earlier. Why? Because a very good decision of our captain. He take the right decision in the right moment. Otherwise, we should have all the inconveniences of the origin that was just right. More. Okay. This is only what is left to finish. Our trip for those who are living in Chicago, it will be other, for those in Genoa, for those in Marseille, for those in Barcelona. And I will publish all of this, not only this, but all many other things about our trip in my blog at Baltic, I will create in the next week. If you will be interested on having some more information about this, please send me an email asking me the URL of the blog. Okay? Now, thank you very much.